Fundamental problem F21 says determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the screw eye and its direction measured clockwise from the x-axis. So first of all, since we're trying to find the resultant force created by these two forces, we're going to go ahead and apply vector addition of forces. So in this case, FR equals the 6 kN force plus the 2 kN force. And since we're using vector addition, I'm just going to rewrite this as FR equals the force vector F1 plus the force vector F2. And over here on the diagram, I'm going to call the 6 kN force F1 and the 2 kN force F2. And so again, we're using vector addition to find FR. So make sure to watch the video on vector addition if you haven't already. And so with vector addition, we have two options, one being the parallelogram law and the other, the triangle law. And so in this case, I'll be using the triangle law. And now I'm just going to implement the triangle law on the diagram by adding the F2 force onto F1. And so our resultant force, FR, will stretch from the screw eye all the way to the head of F2, just like that. And so we have formed our triangle. And so now if we split this triangle into two triangles, we form two right triangles. And this angle is going to be equal to 60 degrees since it's an alternate interior angle. And now since FR is at an angle of 45 degrees from the X axis, then this is going to be 45 degrees as well. And since it's looking a little messy, I'm just going to redraw the triangle next to the diagram. So here we have the 6 kN force at an angle of 60 degrees from the x-axis. And keep in mind that this angle is measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. And now from the head of the force, we draw F2. That's 2 kN. And here we have the alternate interior angle for F1, 60 degrees. Then underneath it, the 45 degrees and the resultant force. And right there is our triangle alone. And since we are given magnitudes and directions of the forces, essentially we have a triangle that looks something like this. Knowing that the magnitude of the force is pretty much the length so we know the two lengths of this triangle and we're trying to find the third length which is fr and now by adding the 60 degrees and the 45 degrees we get 105 degrees so whenever we know two sides and an angle of a triangle and we're trying to find the length that's opposite to that angle we can simply go ahead and implement the cosine law So by using the cosine law, we get fr equals 2 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 2 times 6 times cosine of 105 degrees, all under the square root. So plugging that into the calculator, we get fr equals 6.8 kilonewtons. So that is the magnitude of the resultant force. And now we need to find the direction of this resultant force that's measured clockwise from the x-axis, which is basically the angle measured clockwise from the x-axis. And so to visualize this over here on the diagram, the angle measured clockwise from the x-axis to the resultant force is going to look something like this. And so we're trying to find that angle theta. And in order to find this direction or angle, we can go ahead and implement the law of sines. And let's call the angle between the 2 kN force and FR phi. And I'm just going to write it on the figure to the right. So the law of sines states that sine A over length A equals sine B over length B. So let's say we have this triangle. This is angle A, length A. This is angle B. And length B. So in this case, we're going to have sine phi over its opposite length, which is 6 kilonewtons, and that equals sine 105 over FR, 
which we found at 6.8 kilonewtons. So now we move the 6 kilonewtons to the right side to solve for phi and plugging in the right side into the calculator we get 0 0.142 times the 6 kilonewtons. Now isolating phi, we get sine of inverse or arc sine of 0 0.8523. And again, using a calculator, that equals to 58.46, and that is in degrees. So the angle at this section of the triangle is roughly 58.5 degrees. And now using this information, we can find theta measured clockwise from the x-axis. So if we draw a horizontal line at this tip, we know that this angle is 45 degrees. And so again, using alternate interior angles, this angle in blue is going to be the same as theta. So now theta is equal to the 45 degrees plus the 58.5 degrees and that is equal to 103.5 degrees. And that right there is the direction of the resultant force measured clockwise from the x-axis.